It's November 5th, 2020. Thanks for watching the Calvary Briefing. And as always, I want to remind you that if you would like to be with us on Sunday for in-person worship, please call us today by 2 o'clock or text or email and let us know that you're coming. We also have streaming every Sunday morning at 9.30, and so you do not have to miss a moment of worship uh, with the Calvary Church family. I am really interested in sharing my faith, and I'm constantly in need of inspiration and help and information that will help me. And so it's with a great deal of interest that I read an article this week entitled, How the Pandemic Opens Doors for Evangelism, written by a man named Sam Chan. Sam Chan has done a great deal of sharing in terms of his faith and has some really helpful suggestions for us. He reminds us that in the world that we live in, there's a storyline taking place. This is the secular storyline, and it goes something like this. We arrive in this world as innocent human beings true to ourselves. As we face authority in our lives, perhaps parents, teachers, and especially religion, we are torn away from being true to ourselves. And so all of life is a quest to move back to being true to ourselves, to gain freedom and control over our lives. Now, there are some benefits to that storyline. We aren't married, most of us, to someone that our parents set up for us. We are not working at a job that our parents set up for us either. And so there's a lot of freedom and individualism and control that comes with this storyline. Well, COVID-19 has kind of obliterated this storyline because our control is gone, our freedom is gone. Because of all of the lockdowns and all of the requirements in our lives, we don't have what we thought we were getting with the storyline in secular America. Well, it's interesting that the storyline in secular America actually isn't all that great anyway. A campus minister a couple years ago found out something interesting. College students have been accepting Christ at a higher rate on this campus that the campus minister is working at. And when he really tried to figure out what was causing it, he realized that college students are coming to college today with more freedom than they've ever had. But so what? So you're free. What now? What's your purpose in life? We know that the Western storyline doesn't mean that we'll have a purpose in life. And so the gospel, the good news of Jesus, that he came to save sinners like you and me by dying in our place on the cross, is great news because it gives us true freedom, true freedom to be what God created us to be. Now, as we look at secular storylines, we realize that another secular storyline has to do with the existence of the universe, our existence here on earth. This storyline says there is no God. We're only atoms and molecules, just one of many species of life here on this planet. The universe doesn't care about you. Viruses come and go, species come and go. And this pandemic is just one of many events in the ebb and flow of this universe. It has no meaning, it serves no purpose. Now, that's a pretty discouraging storyline. The storyline that most of you probably hold to and that I hold to is this. Storyline number two says there is a God. He loves you, he made you, and he saves you. He sent his son to earth to be one of us. Jesus died and now lives for us, and we can also live for him and be part of his mission to bring love, mercy, and justice on earth. And even if we can't see why God would allow a pandemic to happen, we can trust that He has a good purpose behind it. There's a big difference between the storyline that we hold to as followers of Christ 
and the storyline that the secular person holds to out in the world. As we look at these storylines, we can see that there might be questions that people have during this pandemic about their existence, about the purpose of the universe, about the purpose of the world. As we look at some of the things that have been happening during this pandemic, uh, I've been laughing at many things that have come out on YouTube. People have been sharing all the different things that they've been doing during the pandemic. Some have learned to play an instrument. Some have learned to bake sourdough bread. Some have learned to do some homemade pizza. But all of these things have sort of a sense of emptiness about them. And they sort of show us that people are trying to cope as best they can. But Jesus doesn't ask us to pretend anything. We don't have to pretend that we're coping with this pandemic. There's no pressure to keep it all together. It's the opposite. As a follower of Christ, I recognize the fact that I'm not okay apart from Him. And I'm not okay, but that's okay. We can't save ourselves. We can't prove ourselves. And that's freedom. And so as you think about the secular world that we live in, think about the different storylines that are out there. The secular storyline leads to a dead end with no purpose. God's storyline, the storyline of the Bible, leads to hope and purpose in this world. Author Tim Keller went through Acts 16 several years ago and talked about of evangelism from this perspective. He said, look at the world that you live in and look at people and the entry points into their lives. In Acts 16, there was a church that was planted in Philippi. And there were three people that are mentioned in Acts 16 who came to know Christ. Lydia, a wealthy woman, basically sat down and had a discussion with Paul. Paul used logic, and Lydia followed Jesus Christ. There was also in Philippi a servant girl, girl who was possessed by an evil spirit. She had a power encounter with Jesus and was set free. And finally, there was a jailer. And the jailer had his world absolutely fall apart. And Paul had the opportunity to tell him how to put it together. As you look at the world that we live in, there are opportunities that you and I have to talk logic with people. There are Lydia's all around us. There are also servant girls all around us, people who are in bondage to some sin that has absolutely ruined their freedom and ruined their lives. And in the world that we live in, there are Philippian jailers all around us. For the last several years, I've had three men on my radar. I've been praying for these men. I've been looking at opportunities to share Christ with these men, and I've had that opportunity, and none of them has turned to Christ at this point. Something inter interesting has happened in the last couple of months. In spite of the fact that the lockdowns and the restrictions have prevented me from being around these three men, two of them have reached out and contacted me. And these two that have contacted me are Philippian jailer types of men. Their worlds have fallen apart and they have some questions. Let's look for openings. Let's remember that this pandemic is an opportunity to reach out and touch others with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I leave you with these words of Sam Chan. We don't always like who we have become in 2020. But in Jesus, we can find true power true freedom, and true peace. The pandemic has revealed multiple emotional entry points to the better story of Jesus Christ. It's time for us to use them. 
That's the truth. It's time for us to use them. Have a great week.